ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ರಾಮಾಯ ರಾಮಭದ್ರಾಯ ರಾಮಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ವೇದಸಿ ರಘುನಾಥಾಯ ನಾಥಾಯ ಸೀತಾಯ ಪತೆಗೆ ನಮಃ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಏಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಯುದ್ಧ ಕಾಂಡ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಸಾ ಮಕರಾಕ್ಷ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ವಾರ್ ಅಗೇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ ರಾಘವ ಬೈ ರಾವಣ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಹಿ ವಿತ್ ಬೋಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಮ್ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಎ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ವಾರಿಯರ್ being the son of kara who was slain by rama rama in the janasthana mukaraksha directly went for a fight with rama boasting about himself rama then ridiculed him telling him to show his prowess in action rather than in his words and then the fierce battle happened between them rama then destroyed his chariot killing his charioteer as well as horses yoked to it Vikaraksha then jumped onto the ground threw his spear towards Rama which he broke which Rama broke it into pieces Rama then applied the agnyastra that is the weapon of the fire god killing Makaraksha instantly during the death of Makaraksha Ravana hitherto victorious in war became a prey to violent anger grinding his teeth and enraged he reflected on what ought to be done because most of the warriors under ravana were always victorious till that time and this is the first time each of those warriors are being killed by rama and his warriors having considered the matter in his wrath he sent his son indrajit out to fight saying having triumphed over those two powerful brothers rama and lakshmana return o hero visible or invisible you are superior in every way were you not victorious in the struggle with indra of incomparable exploits therefore why should you not succeed with these two mortals at his command this command of the king of titans indrajit in obedience proceeded to the place of sacrifice to offer oblations to pavaka according to the traditional rites during the ceremony female titans carrying red turbans also came there and took part in sacrificing of the sacrificing to the fire thereafter titans came up hurriedly to that place where ravani was and in that sacrifice weapons such as sharapatras vipitakas with fiel red robes and iron ladles were placed there then having heaped the fire with sharapatras and tomaras indrajita seized hold of a living black buck by the neck and that smokeless brazier the word the sacred grass oblations and fiel whereupon many auspicious omens indicative of victory appeared with its flames bright as the moon whirling in a southerly direction the fire having been kindled seized hold of the offerings thereafter having offered oblations to agni and gratified the devas danavas and demons indrajit ascended his marvelous car which he had rendered invisible in his magnificent vehicle harness to four horses that hero furnished with wetted shafts and armed with great bow appeared resplendent the chariot with its decorations of refined gold carved with figures of gazelles moons and crescents shone with beauty and indrajit possessed a standard that with 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 its golden rings and encrustations of emerald glowed like a brazier under the protection of the rod of brahma like unto the sun the mighty ravani was invincible setting out from the city having invoked agni and acquired the power to make himself invisible by the aid of sacred formulas lawful to titans triumphant indrajita spoke thus today i shall slay those two who were past their exile in the forest in vain and in combat win a decisive victory for my father ravana 
Vide having destroyed Rama and Lakshmana, I shall enjoy the supreme felicity of ridding the earth of monkeys. Having spoken thus, he made himself invisible and thereafter rushed furiously into the fray, whither Ravana had dispatched him, effulgent with bow and shafts, that ardent adversary of Indra, beholding those two valiant heroes like unto a serpent with three heads, who were losing a stream of arrows in the mid of monkeys, reflected, These are those two, and stretching his bow, he covered those warriors with a shower of darts, as Paranjaya let loose his reign. Probably most of the time Indrajita was fighting during the dark night and probably had not observed Rama and Lakshmana, and this time since he is coming during the daylight itself, he is watching them carefully. Standing in his aerial car, invisible to the eye, he overwhelmed Rama and Lakshmana with wetted shafts. Enveloped by those swift darts, Rama and Lakshmana placed celestial arrows on their bows, and those two valiant warriors covered the sky with a rain of missiles as bright as the sun without striking Indrajita. Thereupon the powerful titan filled the sky with darkness and smoke, blotting out the cardinal points and shrouding himself in a dense fog. And during his airy flight, neither the twanging of his bowstring, nor the sound of the wheels, nor the clattering of the horse's hoofs could be heard, nor could, be, could he himself be seen. In the midst of that fearful darkness, that long-armed warrior loosed a shower of narachas so that it appeared like an avalanche of rocks, and with its golden shafts bestowed on him as a boon, the furious Ravani Indrajita wounded Rama and Lakshmana grievously in every limb. And those two lions among men, overcome by narachas, like unto mountains under a deluge, lose, lose their sweated and golden hafted arrows, and those darts adorned with heron's plumes struck the son of Ravana in the sky and pierced him in his course, whereupon they fell on the earth covered with blood. Thereafter these two princes, with the aid of innumerable shafts, sought to severe the mass of missiles in their flight, had burned them cruelly, and the two sons of Dasharatha aimed their excellent shafts in the direction where, from where the wetted dots do fell. Ravani, however, a skilled driver, coursing on every side in his chariot, struck the two sons of Dasharatha with swift arrows and sharp shafts. Riddled by the golden hafted arrows that rained upon them incessantly, the two sons of Dasharatha appeared like Kimshuka trees in flower. None could follow the rapidity of Titan's course, none catch a glimpse of him, nor his chariot, nor his arrows, so that he resembled the sun obscured by heavy cloud. Struck down, wounded, and slain by him, the monkeys lay stretched on the earth in hundreds, whereupon Lakshmana, enraged, addressed his brother, saying, Shall I lose the Brahma weapon in order to exterminate all the titans? But Brahma, Robert Rama, who bore the marks of royalty, answered him, Nay, it does not behove you to rid the earth of titans. No one may strike him who has withdrawn from the fight, or who has sought perfection, or has hidden himself or stands before you with joined palms, or who is fleeing or intoxicated. O long-armed hero, we will strive to slay Indrajita by employing those exceedingly fiery arrows resembling serpents. That magician, that insignificant titan with his invisible chariot will be overthrown by the monkey leaders should he reveal himself. In fact, if Indrajita revealed himself, he would have even killed by ordinary monkey leaders themselves. That is what he is saying. 
and since he is hiding himself he is considered on par with the cowards or someone who who is seeking refuge falling at the feet of rama having spoken these significant words the hero of the house of ragu who was surrounded by the plavagas in his great might reflected on how he should destroy that barbarian the perpetrator of evil deeds thus ended chapter 80 of yuddha kanda in ramayana namaste sharada devi kashmir puravasini tvam aham prarthaye nityam vidya dananchadehi me goodbye